I'm Brittany Delamora, and thanks so much for tuning in to Examine, where we have real and raw conversations about porn and purity. I'm excited about our next guest. I met him a few years ago when I got to be a part of a documentary called After Porn Ends 3. It's incredible. Check it out on Netflix. Um, today, I'm excited to welcome Billy. Thank you so much for joining Thank us today. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. So I want to know what was kind of like uh, the heart and the vision behind After After Porn Ends. Oh wow! So the vision. So I guess our approach to doing the documentary series was we wanted to enter the community with you no know, bias, mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to capture the imagination, the energy, mm -hmm. passion, but uh, more importantly, the reality. Of mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. and we had a we had a, a a motto on set where we were like, uh, you know, if you if you want to learn something, just shut up and listen. Yeah, that's good. And so that was uh, primarily our approach. Mm -hmm. And what did you do um, on the documentary? What was your job description? So I was a I, I am a producer on the series, mm -hmm. and uh, I edited the uh, second one. And uh, I mean, you wear multiple hats when you do a documentary. You know, it's uh, whatever it takes, but uh, whether it's, you know, it's a lot of relationship building. Yeah. You want to gain the trust of the people, you know, <laughs> be genuine about it, but you, you know, yeah. it's, you need to build those relationships and develop them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when the real stories start coming out. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to show, um, you know, a documentary where it was like two sides. There was really no... You know, you didn't go in with a, the industry is this way or the industry is that way. You're very neutral. So when you, did you get what you were hoping for, like from the documentary? Like, did you, you had your vision and then when you went in, were you like, okay, this, we got exactly what we were looking for? Yeah, it, it, it kind of crazy, but the, the stories were, were kind of humorous to in a way you know some of them were <laughs> yeah it's like they're describing uh, uh their careers and I, I was like okay this is interesting you know just yeah. uh what goes on actually on set mm -hmm. uh that was an experience yeah. you know and so a lot of shocking uh funny stuff but uh i think we got the message i'd like to say we got the message across and in, in what we were seeking out to, to do mm -hmm. and let the audience kind of form their own opinion right we did go into it with a very non-biased outlook and mm -hmm. you know we we wanted to uh just have these people tell their stories you know and yeah uh give them a platform you know give them mm -hmm. a voice it's crazy you have it's a very vulnerable um community mm -hmm. you know and why is that um, well, if you look online, if, if you ever see a video on YouTube, uh, the performer giving an interview and stuff, uh, look at the comments mm -hmm. on it, you know? They're horrible. Yeah, people can be cruel. This is society, you know? So mm -hmm. this goes into one of your questions was, is, uh, you know, what do you say to somebody that wants to enter the industry? Yeah. And the answer to that is make sure you have like a coat of armor on. Mm-hmm. You get it. And it happened last year. Um, I was just talking to somebody today about August Ames. She yeah. took a stance in the industry. You know, she wasn't okay with a couple things that were going on. And, you know, she vocalized that on her Twitter and just got severely bullied. And, you know, a lot of the industry came back and, and lashed out at the bullies because they believe that the bullies are a huge reason why she went in the direction she did, which was suicide. Mm -hmm. And like online bullying is never okay. You no, know, it and isn't. We need to do a documentary on that. You yeah, need no, to do it, a documentary it, on it that. It needs to be addressed. And like I say, it's with the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So Carbon Shark has a, has a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and it's a bunch of the bonus features for After Porn Ends. Got it up, it's like a million views on one of them, another million views. I was like, wow, you know, people are really uh, taking to this. Mm -hmm. And then I started going through the comments. What were some of the comments? I mean, they're they're horrific. You know, it's they're 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 really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the majority of them. There was some people supporting, you know, just kind of having their back. But the the majority of comments were just uh, people just hammering them. You yeah. Know? And it's, it's horrible. I felt really bad. And I think mm -hmm. you know, how do we address cyberbullying? And you know, mm -hmm. what do we do to combat that? And yeah. Yeah, I guess we can address it as much as possible, yeah. but um, we can't censor them. Mm -hmm. That's their right. Yeah. 
but man, yeah. or can we? I don't it goes know. beyond porn though too. It's it's anytime you put yourself in front of an audience on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's like you know they say that when people drink they get liquid courage. Well, I believe that people on the internet get keyboard courage. You know, they just They're hiding. start. Typing away, you know, so even with social media nowadays, people put themselves on Instagram and Facebook and they have these public profiles and, you know, you, you open you open this door for people to just come in and, and say whatever they want to say. And it's just the dark world we live in and that's... <laughs> it's a driving... It was you know? seriously, it was such the driving force though, like mm -hmm. to do another documentary, seeing those comments pissed me off. It, yeah. it really motivated me because I'm like, how dare you? You know, you don't know this person. Yeah. You know, what did they do to you? Mm -hmm. It really, really got to me. Where does that heart come from that you have? Like you have a, you genuinely have a heart to protect I, people. people. I, 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 I do. Um, very much about respect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, that's a big value. You know, it's, I hate disrespectful people. I yeah. truly, I could say, I, I hate to say that I hate something, but mm -hmm. I do. It's, mm -hmm. there's, I have zero tolerance for that. So when you were working on After Porn Ends, um, you got to interview quite a few people. Mm -hmm. You get to see a lot of people be yeah. interviewed. Um, in the industry, when I was my former self, when I was Jenna Presley, we really learned how to well, I learned how to perform, you know, like I didn't know how to get out of character and I really protected the industry in a different way, like where I would literally, I would just lie about things. I would lie about, you know, the STDs weren't in the industry and just different things, you know, to protect who I was because my career was on the line. And so I was really mm. in performance mode and also it's, it's easier to hide behind an alter ego it's easier to hide behind your character when you're not comfortable with yourself yeah. so do you feel like there were any unauthentic interviews or do you feel like everybody was just you know completely authentic in who they were <sighs> you, you like i just thought of ginger lynn because mm -hmm. ginger lynn had said um how some performers turn their porn star on and off and she goes into talking about a couple uh, sitting across from each other, you know, prior to a scene, and they're just on their phones. Yeah. You, you know, and uh, <laughs> and she's 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 in this room too, and she's just like watching this. And when they go, you know, they they're ready to start shooting, they just put their phones down, and they go start having sex. Exactly. And she's just for her, she's like, I can't believe they just went and did that. That yeah. is not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, she's. I love, she loved being in the industry. She loved yeah. what she was doing, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, I, it's some performers, you know, I, maybe that's their approach. I don't think it was for all of them. Yeah. Um, but I got more the sense of back in the 80s and 90s, the performers from back then, it was a different time. And a lot of those performers planted their feet and set it out truly as a, as, as a career. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be in it, whether what got them in there, you know, is a different story, but it's when they were in it, a mm -hmm. lot of them were just, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be in this industry. I'm going to be the best. Mm -hmm. How's your view changed on pornography or has it changed at all since like pre filming this documentary versus after filming the documentary? You know, there needs to be a message that gets out there mm -hmm. about, uh, the difference between entertainment mm -hmm. and education, you know, um, kids watching porn today mm -hmm. see that, you know, this is, we've kind of all heard this and they think that that's the norm. That's what right. you do, you know, yeah. and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, educating a younger audience into um, sex and love and mm -hmm. the difference between that and adult mm -hmm. entertainment. Right. In the documentary, yeah. After Porn Ends, this was all people who had left the industry. Mm -hmm. But not some... All. Oh, not all. Well, we have um, bridges between segments of okay. current performers, uh, yeah. new and current performers that, uh, yeah. So what happened though with the performers that had left? Some of them went back. Why do you think that is? That's a great question. I think some of them went back into the industry after they left porn because um, it goes back to the evolution of the industry and where I think it's, it's moving. And this is completely subjective. You know, I just, from being around it, I feel like this is the direction it's going. Why did, you know, why did Lisa Ann go back? Mm -hmm. Why did uh, Brittany Andrews go back? And I think it 
has to do with the fact that they, the power and control mm -hmm. uh, comes back to them now. Mm -hmm. That um, they, the money's still good. You know, their names and stuff in the industry, so uh, they can control what they're doing. Yeah. But what did they find out? You know, mm -hmm. as we were talking earlier, um, they're like, yeah, this isn't for me anymore. Yeah, that's I've what grown. Lisa was saying yesterday. So Lisa's, it's not for I'm me not, anymore. This isn't for me anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I've grown. I want to do different things. Yeah. What, you know, I think I, the exit and return rate is actually really high because um, I had left the industry at one point for maybe a period of eight months and then I got back into it. Uh -huh. And I think it's just you're so familiar with that industry. Like I was like, well, where am I supposed to go work? I'm going to apply for a job at Hooters. And then I had a tattoo and they said, well, we can't hire you at this location. And really? I'm like, at Hooters? At Hooters. I was like, what the heck? So it's kind of like, well, what do I do now? You know, and you're so familiar with that industry that oftentimes like you'll just go back to your place of comfort because it is hard. Well, you to... get a sense of, you get a sense of community with, right? with the industry. And so, yeah, it's, it's what you know. And it's what you know. know. Yeah. Hey, there's a girl who had reached out to me a couple years ago who wanted out of the industry. And so I told her, okay, you want out? Come move in with me and my husband. Yeah. She came. Really? Yeah. This is not a joke. I met her on Instagram. I didn't even know her when I was in porn. Like she'd only been in it for maybe a year or so yeah. at this point. And so I told her, come, come move in with us, you know, move in. <laughs> <laughs> she came, she lived with us for one night. And then, I, I know, I just was talking to her the other day, I'm like, why did you leave? And she's like, honestly, I just didn't feel worthy of a better life. She's like, I didn't wow. feel like I d deserved that and I was also afraid. And she's like, I had a panic attack that night. Like, what, what's my life gonna look like? Am I gonna be poor? Am I gonna be homeless, you know? Yeah. And so she went back. It's easier sometimes to go back than it is to move forward. Like my process of moving forward, I had to work at a limousine company. I went from making $30,000 a month to $11.25 an hour. Oh. Yeah, it's a humbling. It was really, really humbling. I had to rent a room from my dad for four hundred dollars. Like I had, to, I was so. For me, I was at that place where I was so done with my addiction, and I knew that if I was in the industry, it was going to feed my addiction, so I was going to have the money to pay for drugs. And, and did and, you question going back, like almost like every day or something, like? Are you, because you missed the money or was it that the ever first thing? time I left I did yeah. so I learned from my mistakes because the first time that I left I still kept like my Twitter account up and over a hundred thousand followers and and so when I tell people oh I'm retired from the industry then all of a sudden my name was number one on free ones and I'm getting all these people messaging me and why are you retiring this that? and so it was this like gravitational pull yeah so the second time I left I said okay I am deleting my Facebook I don't really? I don't care how many followers I have <laughs> Uh, deleting my Twitter I did not care I deleted everything because like when I got into the industry I was already broken and so then when you're broken and you have a lot of money and you're already prone to doing drugs I was doing drugs off and on in, in high school I'm like okay well it's easy to get here because I have a lot of money a lot of people are on drugs so I can get it here and there so I knew that if I wanted to protect myself that I needed to just get rid I didn't even tell anybody the second time when I quit for good that I was leaving. I didn't tell my agent. I changed my number. I literally disappeared. Hmm. Like, I don't even know if anybody was looking for me. I changed everything. You so just wanted to... I was done. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I was to a place in my life where I knew that if I didn't change something that I was going to be dead. I knew it. Like really? I had because of just drugs and just the people you were uh, around and mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of like there's there's some genuine people in the industry that then there's also a lot of like narcissism and and people that don't genuinely have your back because it's competition. But because it's, it's one of the things I struggle with too, but that's informing kind of an opinion. You yeah. know, it's there. There are good people in it. You mm -hmm. know, and I mean, it's like any industry, though, too. You know, we deal with this in you know, film and television and yeah, stuff. And it's anywhere. It's it's it really is. So yeah. um, that's why I, I'm like I struggle with mm -hmm. you know, you know, you talk to some pretty amazing people on the business side mm -hmm. and uh, on the performer side. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's very confusing. Yeah, you definitely. Know? I had a, uh, a you know different opinion of this before I started filming After Porn Ends, mm -hmm. and I, I looked at it 
I was one of those people, you know, where I completely judged it. And um, it took uh, learning about people and, and, and talking with them to stop me in the tracks and just, you know, want to have more of an open mind. Right. And um, what and was your judgment before before filming? I was, I, you know, it's it's. You know, anybody that does porn, you know, they're, 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 they must be, you know, like messed up or something. Oh, yeah. That was, you know, my opinion and I was wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I feel like people have planted their feet and set out to do it as a career mm -hmm. and fully embraced it. But then you have people that get into it, you know, just like completely just the wrong reasons yeah and it just it, you know it, it pushes their life in such a different direction mm -hmm. that it, it could have gone so what would you say because mm -hmm. you're gonna be a father and I believe you're gonna have, Soon, a, you're gonna have a son right? you're gonna have a daughter come on what would you say if your daughter wanted to get into the porn industry I knew that was coming <laughs> <laughs> Brittany <laughs> what, would I, what would I say um, again I would say have your coat of armor on. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do, have mm -hmm. your coat of armor on mm -hmm. because society is going to take some swings at you. Mm -hmm. And if you think that you can handle that, it's yours to decide. Yeah. Um, prior to that and prior to whatever my child would want to do as a career, mm -hmm. I hope as a dad that I would give them the tools to um, explore every possible option mm -hmm. that they can, you know, that I could provide. Mm -hmm. And if that's the uh, if that's the road that they wanted to take, and there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. What do you think, wifey would say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I can't speak for her, but right. I think she would come to the same conclusion as me. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't. I would love to uh, hear what she has to say. <laughs> yes. Put her on camera. I know. I know. I'm very like protective. I'm very like this is my like. I have Richard. to ask you now. I know I'm not interviewing you. But yeah. What would you? Uh... What would I say? Um, you know, my dad took uh, uh, the approach with me is like you know whatever makes you happy, do whatever you want to do in your life. You know, I'm here for you. And I think that I needed more of somebody to tell me like that's not. You know, Given your, why are you doing yeah. this? Like, what? why do you want to do this? Why are you willing to take your clothes off for millions of people? Like, what is it about it? Like, like I needed somebody to be there to maybe correct me. And, and I know that if my daughter wanted to get into the industry, um, because I know the brokenness, because I have a lot of friends in the business, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. because I know like there's some girls, I when I was in the industry, I used to always ask girls, how'd you get in the business? Why'd you get in the business? There's so many different stories, whether it's, well, my parents were overly religious and they told me I was gonna go to hell, so I figured I'll just do whatever I want. Or you get the so stories. And yeah, so they're, yeah, exactly. Or you get the stories of, you know, um, I thought I was gonna be homeless or, there's some stories of, of sadly molestation. There's like, everybody has a story, right? And oftentimes it comes from the childhood, right? So if my daughter said, mom, I wanna get into porn, I'll be 100% honest with you, I would feel like I failed as a mom. Mm -hmm. I really would. And, and I don't have any judgment towards people or towards my friends, but I'm in total mama bear mode and I wanna protect my baby girl from the heartbreak, from the pain, and I would want to know why she felt the need to um, try to gain affirmation through her body. Because we as women are worth so much more than just our bodies. We're worth, like, it's, I don't want somebody to, I don't want my daughter to feel like she has to get attention because of the way she looks. You know, mm -hmm. that's a lot, it's a lot of pressure, you know? Yeah. Um, that you feel like in order to feel good about yourself that you always have to like look perfect and and all of this and and i would want her to love herself from the inside out and not the outside in mm -hmm. and a lot of times like not just in porn but in hollywood in general you do you like you have to take you have to take care of yourself like this is your image this is what you're selling but it if you're not confident internally then you start to love yourself outside in yeah. right so you know oh my god 
I, and sometimes I still deal with this, to be honest with you. I'm like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, dude, I have flab on my arms. Like, gosh. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, give yourself grace, girl. You're pregnant. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And I have to retrain. Okay, love yourself from the inside out. Okay? Like, you're going to get your body back. It's going to be good. But, yeah, I, I would really feel, I would almost feel like, I would feel sad. Yeah, it's... It's crazy if you uh, if you see the bonus features and stuff on on uh, online. There, the, a lot of the stories are it's um, of the new and current performers. You know, uh, I I didn't really particularly like the reasons why they were getting into the industry. You know, yeah. it's uh, one of them was about I was raped when I was 16 uh, years old. Yeah, and girl goes into a story about that. I'm like, that's not a good reason. You know, mm -hmm. that's a very bad reason. Mm -hmm. You had nobody there to, to help you. You were a minor, you mm -hmm. know, you never reported this guy. Mm -hmm. um, had a, a, another girl uh, where she's currently in the industry and uh, she's, you know, wants to uh, mentor um, kids. Mm -hmm. She's in the, in the industry and she's like, when I get out, that's what I want to do. And I'm like, you know, it, it's like, you know, that's uh, probably not going to happen for you, mm -hmm. you know, and if there's lack of guidance where somebody was kind of needed to explain that to her. Like, mm -hmm. hey, um, again, whether this is right or wrong, it, hey, this is how, you know, it's going to be, though. You yeah. know, when, when you go to go get that job, mm -hmm. um, sorry, man, this isn't, you know, just where we're at in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. The world's very divided. There's some people who just um, maybe like dabble in porn and then... What effect do you think um, porn has on maybe the the human mind or like on somebody who, who feels like they're addicted? Like what do you say to that person? What I'd like to see, and this may be, you know, after porn ends like four, yeah. you know, but maybe, maybe something like that could be addressed in it, yeah. you know? I think that would be kind of a, a cool idea. We've... Mm -hmm. Bryce Wagner and I, we've, we've talked about trying to shift the series in, a, in another direction. Mm -hmm. um, not that something is more important than the other. Right. It's just to kind of expand and, and talk about new issues and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I think this is a very important issue. Yeah. Because, uh, just like you said, any addiction, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, there's a problem there. And it's mm -hmm. going to cause uh, problems in your life, in other areas of your life, mm -hmm. work and your relationship. You know, it's yeah. if you're doing that, you're not having probably not having sex with your wife all that much mm -hmm. and you know it's your there's a disconnect there or uh, maybe it's influencing you in some way and mm -hmm. you know I, yeah. I get it you know it's so then seeing it as like people can be addicted so taking away from like if we just remove the performers so we're not looking at the humans yeah. in the we're just looking at the industry in itself mm -hmm. so is that potentially dangerous for you know, all of the people who are actually addicted to it, as cocaine was once like. Is the industry dangerous to those people? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it goes back to what we were talking about with guidance yeah. in their life and not, there's something else. They're seeking this out for a reason. Yeah. You know, what is, what is that? Why are you seeking uh, porn. What mm -hmm. you know? Why are you becoming obsessed with this? Mm -hmm. I don't think any one thing is to blame. You know, it, it goes back, like I said, you know, to guidance. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think that when you're trying to fill a void in any sense, whether it's drugs, shopping, porn, whatever it is, like there's a void that that can really only be filled. By and it, you know, it's you know maybe the maybe the platforms and the performers. You know, it, they. Hopefully, maybe they create some sort of a bigger education, you know, mm -hmm. aspect of of it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think a, a big part of what we were talking about today is, it, I guess, the answer was a lot of guidance and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and how it, it kind of that's where it stems from. And mm -hmm. yeah. so I love that you guys are doing this, you know, and you have such a positive voice, Richard, as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, God bless you guys Thank on your, you. you know, journey with this. Um, I am in full support. Thank you. Anything I can ever do. Thank uh, you, you know, so I'm, much. I'm with you guys on this. So. Thank you. We really appreciate you, and I am so grateful that you're here today. And yeah. thank you for allowing me to interview you. It's been a blessing. Cool. Thank you for having me. Of course.
name is Brittany. I used to be an adult star. I met Rachel several times at the Exotica conventions. She would know me as Jenna Presley. I would stop by at the Triple X church booth to see her. She is so beautiful and I absolutely love and adore her. I want to give her the most amazing praise report. Thank you, Jesus. I found him. I'm home. I want to thank her for all of her kind words and loving spirit. I don't know if she realizes how she impacted me or not, but her being so kind and non-judgmental always felt so good. I have finally encountered the unconditional love of God and I will never go back. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Brittany. The Triple X Church has been a huge part of introducing Jesus to my life. And once I left the industry, they also helped me to not go back into the industry. Their support has truly helped radically change my life. They've also, over the last 20 years, helped hundreds of thousands of people get set free from their addiction to pornography. And so today, I'm asking for your help. Visit xxxchurch.com slash donate to give today to be a part of what God is going to do over the next 20 years in this ministry. I love you. God bless you. And thank you for your generosity.